Autumn is hard for many. When the evening gets darker and the weather gets wetter, many people lose contact with nature. In the modern lifestyle you are only outside when you rush from home to the car to commute to and from work. Through the window the world looks dark and sad and grey. We are all as much a part of nature as anything else out there, so it's only natural that you feel disconnected, as most people live today. All of this changes if you step outside the door and look up. Autumn is more than just dark, cold and wet, it is also unbelievably beautiful. When you have a farm, nature greatly influences the jobs that need to be done. The wheel of the year slowly spins into a new season, where the leaves change color and the grass grows more slowly. The darkness and the cold we now feel affects the biological clocks in the sheep. The time is approaching to reproduce so that lambs are born to new and delicious grass and warmth in the spring. For us that means that it is time to do something about the rams. This year we have two rams that we can no longer have. They are now too closely related to the sheep for us to use them for breeding. That means that they will become food. This year I had the help from my brother-in-law to butcher them. These will become many good meals. We have also decided to take at least one year lamb free. That means that we will not have rams with the sheep this year. The reason is that the lambs easily get through the weaknesses in our fences and we need some time to upgrade and extend them. So now in the fall the grass is growing a lot slower here on the fields and that means that the sheep are a lot more motivated to try out the fences. And we have two loops with electric fences. And so one of the things that we need to do now is to, to check them and to prepare them for the winter. So this is a classical example on what's happening. Uh, the grass has grown in the summer, it grows up against the electric fence. And now when it's dying, it's, it's rotting and it's laying over the fence. And the wet grass works as a grounding wire. And the more we have of this, the more it drains the fence of its power. So the first thing we're going to do now is to measure how much power the fence have right now. And to do that we, we do and to do that we use a fence um, measuring device, I don't know what this is called in English, to see how much power this fence have. And afterwards we need to clean the entire fence all the way. As you can see, there is no electricity on this fence at all. So then we have our start point and uh, of course we will start by taking out the power inlet 
or this job would, uh, would uh, soon be very uncomfortable. So now we are with an old pile of rocks and this is prob probably some of the reason why they built the farmhouse so close as you can see here. And, but this is not only a source of rocks, it is also the old uh, recycling center if you will. Because they also threw a lot of garbage here. As you can see these are some old uh, fence nettings and we have been pulling out a lot of broken glass, pans, uh, and stuff like that. And so this takes a lot of time to, to clear out. So we are doing it uh, a little now and then. So, but anyway, let's continue with uh, clearing the fence. So then we are at the first of the two ends of the fence and uh, this uh, portion that we have taken now is about one third of the total length of the fence. So when we go back and go the other way uh, it is a lot longer. And this actually shows the big problem with electric fences. They are fairly quick to set up but the convenience stops there because sheep can of course not clean these fences. When grass grows up, it will uh, ground the fence and take away the electric charge. Uh, but the fixed fences take a lot longer to set up, but once you have done that, they last for several years. And those fences, the sheep will actually clean them themselves, because if it grows grass hair, they will eat it, or tree sprouts or everything, they will just clean it out. As long as you have sheep, they will actually keep the fence for you. So, but then that's a bit of the problem because we needed some fencing done quickly so we could expand uh, our fields for sheep. And so we took the quick, quick way out. But because we have done that, we, we are using a lot of time on these fences. And that's time that we actually could have used to set up fixed fences and save time. So it's a bit of a um, problem there, but anyway, 
Uh, we need to go on with uh, fixing the fences, so we need to go back to where we started and go the other way. So where we are now, the fence is stopping against the mountain wall behind me here, and it continues on the top. And the electricity goes in this wire here on the top of my head, up to the, to the fence on the top. But when we are first here, I want to go show you guys something. And that is this piece of art. And so there is a story behind this. Uh, the sheep discovered that they could go behind the fence pole here and go out. And so we put down an iron pole to, to tighten the gap up. But then they discovered that they could just jump from this piece of rock and over. And so what I did then was that I built this creation. But then they discovered that they could just push it aside and still go back out. And so my wife went up here with a drill and she built this creation here. And after that they haven't gone out. But that just shows the importance of cleaning the fence. Because when the sheep have learned that there is a way out, they are very motivated to, to keep going out that way. And so if they learn that the fence is not electrified, then they will stop uh, respecting it. And it takes a lot to stop them uh, getting out after that. So anyway, let's continue. So now we are up on this uh, hilltop that I talked about uh, earlier and here we are actually started to, to set up a fixed fence. Um, we need to drive down iron poles here uh, because it is so shallow. We, we just hit, hit rocks uh, just a few inches uh, under the dirt. So we use a big drill and make holes and drive down the iron poles. And this work we actually started on about one and a half year ago and it just stopped. Uh, we tried to get up a really heavy uh, roll of um, fence netting and I couldn't manage it by myself and uh, we were actually three people trying to hoist it up along the, the hill side and we couldn't do it because it was just too heavy. And so it still lies where we left it. And it's a bit difficult to prioritize this project because in the summer uh, half of the year uh, it's too much of the standard uh, task that we need to do. Uh, and in the winter half it's dark, uh, we only have a few hours of daylight every day. And it's difficult to get up here and also there's a lot of bad weather so it, uh, it's uh, far down on the list. But anyway, let's continue.
So one of the things that I like when I'm out working like this is to sit down and take a break. When the body is tired, the mind relaxes. When, when I'm sitting here, listening to the sounds of nature, the rain dripping, the waterfall, there is a river close by, and the birds, then I'm relaxing. All, just, not just in my body, but also in my mind. Now, for those of you that are following my channel may have noticed that there is some time since I published a video and there is a reason for that, and that's because I've been sick. And it wasn't anything serious. Uh, I just had a cold, which I could not shake. I had it for weeks. And also, uh, because of that, I got some uh, disease in the throat. I don't really know what that's called in English. But, um, and I've been struggling with that for some time. And that's why it, uh, it's been taking a lot of time since I made the last video. And I actually read an article today uh, in a newspaper and it made me think uh, the entire year has different energies. In the spring, uh, everything is waking up in nature. Uh, the energy levels are increasing in everything and also in us humans. Summer, we can go on all night. It's light all the time. We don't really get tired. Um, and then fall comes and the energy level drops both in nature's and animals but also in us but we do not uh, calm down as as the rest of nature does uh, because the modern society is not uh, made like that you are supposed to be as efficient at work in the fall and winter as you are in summer and that is a problem because humans aren't really made like that we have taken a step away from nature but we are still as much a part of it as we have always been on our farm it's obvious that the workload hasn't been the same all year round in the summer they had a lot to do they needed to make hay for animals they needed to grow vegetables uh, butcher animals and everything like that but one fall calm came but when fall came and you got closer to the winter uh, those tasks uh, were finished and there wasn't that much that needed to be done in the winter and that was actually for relaxing uh, and that's obvious uh, when you look closely on our farm there's so many small projects that I've had where I've taken a lot of time much more than I needed to make the details just right. And that shows me that the whole year wasn't work, work, work all the time. They actually had periods where they had a lot of time. And it's not like that anymore. And I think it's not only because the weather is changing that there is so much, uh, much sickness um, uh, in the fall. I think it's also because uh, we are not letting our body rest as we should after the summer so but anyway let's finish this fence uh, we are getting uh, really close now to the end mm -hmm. Then it's time to see if we have some electricity in the fence. Yeah. 
Now, I don't know if it shows on camera, but I can see that it's blinking for up to 4000 volts. And that means that we have a good charge in the fence. So we have electricity in the fence, but it's not enough to just measure it where the electricity is connected to the fence. We also need to go to each end and measure it there to see that it's connected all the way. So in this end we are measuring 4000 volts and then we just need to go to the other end. So now we are heading for the last side of the fence and here I'm really hoping that we have electricity because it's a long way to fault search if we don't. And the sun is going down now and I really don't want to start fault searching the fence. So let's just cross our fingers. This is not looking good. There is no electricity here. So this is what I was afraid of. Uh, there is no electricity in the other end. And that means that the fence is disconnected at some point. So now I just need to find out where. This is really not what I wanted to be doing now. So I've been probing the fence a few places on my way back and I'm now back uh, with this, um, with this uh, hilltop and this is actually the first place where I, I'm measuring uh, electricity. And also you can probably hear the ticking, ticking sound that's coming from the connection uh, from the thread that's going up to the top of the hill. And so it could be where the connection is lost. But I don't really have time to start fault searching anymore now. Also, I, I should have brought a phone then so I could coordinate with my wife to, to cut off uh, the power while I was working or and back on when I was measuring. Or, or if not, I need to just run back and forth and that takes a lot of time. And right now, the sun has dipped below the mountains and that means that it's soon getting dark. And I have one more thing I need to do today. And that's actually to, to um, uh, mount some heat lamps uh, for, for the chickens and uh, for the rabbits. That's because it's so cold and wet outside now and uh, it becomes really like moist in their house as well. And so they need a heat source in order to dry out. So uh, that's something that we're going to do now. And I will leave the false searching to another day.